And welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the semifinals, the lower semifinals of uh, Code for Giants Cup number 13. We are jumping into our ZVT, our best of three, and spawning in the bottom left hand corner of uh, Crimson Court. We have the Brazilian Terran player, the Blue Terran, representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Inex Zorb. Inex. And spawning in the top right hand corner, we have one of our own. We have the Cranky Dunking himself, the Red Zurich player from Brazil. It is Eric. Ah, it's been far too long. Ah, far too long. We go. We got Eric, of course, has been focusing on his studies as of late. So he hasn't had or he hasn't been able to compete as often as he would like in a Code for Giants Cup. So he missed last edition, but now he is back. He is back with a vengeance looking to claim his spot, claim his throne at the top of Brazil. We'll see if he can. For now, hatch first. Hatch first opener here from Eric. Eric is a very creative player. He's very unorthodox. He does often come up with his own builds. And because of that... We'll keep an eye on him. We'll keep an eye on him. I will say that in this matchup, he often plays a little bit more standard in a sense. Um, you know, hatch gas pool, standard opener so far. We'll, we'll see if this leads into roaches. Eric is more of a roach player, less so Ling Bane. Um, does often go two base muta though. Um, did in the past have a two base swarm host build. Um, but I, I remember talking to him, I think it was like three weeks ago. I was like, oh, when are you doing two base almost again? And uh and Eric was like, ah, like he's a little bit out of out of shape and it requires a lot of APM. It requires like a lot of attention to detail. For those who maybe haven't seen the two base almost build, it um it's actually initially two base uh drop lord with queens where he spreads creep across the map from from the Terran side to to his own side. Um it delays like the start into like into swarm host, into like safety infestors, fungal growth. Like, there's so many layers to it. So many layers. It's so complex. And I mean, it looks really cool when it comes together. But um, yeah, Eric, not feeling too confident about uh, but his current play to, to try to pull that off. One day we'll see it come back. One day. One day, Patty. One day. Uh -huh. As for now, he's going to be saturating his natural, mining through the gold minerals. We're going to expand and take the linear third. Meanwhile, inexorable, opening up a Rack's Expand, is moving out. Is it going to be moving out? Reaper hits the natural. Queen is already ready for this. Inexorable going through a TC before Starport. Economic build here out of Inexorable. Everything looking standard. Everything looking economic for the Terran side. Meanwhile, Eric likewise getting his third. Getting his third base. Um, now, thankfully, be I, I should say thankfully, because of the features of Crimson Court, so this third base is very safe. Um, there's no Reaper Cliff to actually gain access to the location. So the third base is safe and sound. Eric can be greedy. Eric can cut corners. And the Reaper does threaten the mineral line, but alas, Eric does hold. We can settle in. We can settle in from here. Likewise, Overlord dips in, confirms the third CC timing. Eric is fully aware. There we oh no! Oh, Eric now fully aware of the build. He does catch the Reaper as well, inexorable, leaving an idol out on the map. So far, Eric, he knows all he needs. He knows he can just freely drone, just freely drone up, freely saturate. And to get ready for the eventual Banshee play. So it is 3 CC Banshee from Inexorable. Eric will soon need those four crawlers. It's taking all four gases. The heavy gas, uh, the gas count tells us that Eric, he's either going Roaches or could even go two base Muta. Did mention it before. Lair is on the way. I don't see a Roach Warren yet. Bailing that, it's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be Muta, right? We'll see. Is taking one Evo Chamber, just the one upgrade. I'm still leaning towards Aspire. Still leaning in that direction. Aliens, they poke in, they pick off a couple of tumors. Two tumors go down. Just the one Evo Chamber plus one Carapace. And again, the fact that there's only one Evo Chamber tells us that he's saving his gas. He's 
Saving his gas for something else. Mass Hellion threatens the natural, gets another tumor. Going for the Queens. And Queens getting low. Is there a transfuse? Barely not. No transfuse. Queen goes down. Massive pickup. Nice is done here by an Exorable. Pulls away. Lair is done. And yep, there is a Spire. So again, the fact that it was only one Eva Chamber, the fact that we saw um, four gases being taken at once, and now a fifth and sixth gas, it, it has to be mutants. So we mentioned before that um, Muta plays something that Eric has been quite fond of as of late. So it is going Mass Muta. And so far, Inexorable's in the dark. It did go Banshee, but he hasn't harassed. He has not gone into the main or the third. He has not seen the gases. That would be a tell. We could actually get another Queen. Uh oh. Queens are rotating. No creep is connecting. Eric, he's exposed. He's vulnerable. Having a hard time responding. Heli is a bust into the mineral line. Oh, only two drones. Okay, only two workers going down. Links to get a surround. And it will shut down the Hellions. Queens are keeping up as well. Meanwhile, Banshees, they hit the third. They do scout the gases. That is a tell here for an Exorable. Spore not quite in position. Queens not either. 11 drone kills. Oh, my God. An Exorable wreaking havoc. And Eric, he has a lot of rage running through. He's making 15 more drones. Now, Eric has no army. He, he barely has any... This is his army. Four links. Four links to work with. If an Exorable had gone in with reinforcing Hellions, that would be... That, that could just be game. Scan reveals the Spire. Tarts are on the way. Tarts are being thrown down as we speak. Eric no longer has a surprise factor. Inexorable does confirm. And the Terran is in the driver's seat. He forced those direct players to resaturate their bases to expend all that life on drones. 11 mutas are on the way. The mutas, they should not get much damage. Inexorable looking good. Looking good so far. Again, the fact that there was no creep initially connecting the bases was brutal. The queens, they just took so long to respond, to rotate. Mutas are moving out, and we'll see what they can get done. Again, it's not going to be easy just because of all the turrets. Likewise, the Exorbital's pushing. I do really like this timing here for the Terran. Because there's so little ground support. As the mutants are distracting themselves by harassing, Eric is vulnerable. And here comes a push. And Exorbital pushing towards the right hand side. Mutas, they get a couple of add ons, they pick up a couple of Marines. But Inexorable, he is committing. Is there bailing speed? Okay, there is bailing speed. There are a handful of bailings. Nice spread here by Inexorable. Eric tries to crash in, but Inexorable is gaining more ground. Getting himself with the third. And Eric, he cannot save it. The Mutas are racing back home. They get three SCVs across the map. And Eric, he is in trouble. He will catch the Banshees at least. Gets the Banshees, Ling's trying to go for a counterattack, getting some straight reinforcements. Ah, he's, going, he's not getting much else. Oh, nice initial pickoffs. Pickoffs here, but geez, there are just so many Marines. Decent bathing connections, but the Marine count is just too high. Oh god! Do we split? Oh, force to pick up. Not the best engagement here by an Exorbital bleeding out a lot of Marines. But there still is enough. Yeah, still more than enough. The Bio Army pushes through. We can stim, we can win the fourth base under fire. The backup third, I should say. And Eric, he's still up against the wall. 13 bailings on the way. And the Exorable stimming in. Getting into the mineral line. Catching these drones. That GG gets cold. That's just far too much. And an Exorable will take game number one. GG. 
GG, well played again. Just a solid start for Inexorable. He was able to cripple the economy early on. Um, not just that, he was able to scout. He was able to scout, able to confirm what was happening, able to get eyes on the Spire tech, and he completely shut down the muters. The muters, they did nothing across the map. And again, um, because Eric had lost so many drones at the start of the game, he had to resaturate, and that means that Eric's main army was that much smaller. He didn't really have much Ling Bane to work with. That is why Inexorable snowballed out of control. He was able to break the third break the fourth and just never really allow Eric to expand outside of inexorable taking a bad fight outside of inexorable miscontrolling and just making mistakes that was really what Eric was hoping for but uh, alas inexorable he played it out very well played it out well GG and with that inexorable is now one game away from making it to the grand finals now I do still favor master uh, master I do still favor Eric uh coming into this but uh Clearly, Inexorable is someone that, that has to be taken seriously. Um, you have to play safe. You have to, uh, if you ever leave an opening, if you're ever vulnerable, then Inexorable will take advantage of you. He will abuse that. So, Eric, he's got to tighten up here. Got to tighten up his early game if he wants to take on Inexorable. We'll see what the plan is. We'll see if this time we play Roach. Uh, based on the map, based on how small it is compared to, you know, Crimson Courts, how a little bit more open the third base is as well. I'm imagining Roach play, but we'll see. We shall see a spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Oceanborn. We have the Brazilian Terran player, the Blue Terran, representing the Platinum Heroes. It is inexorable. And spawning in the top left-hand corner, we have as opponent, we have... The Brazilian Zerg player, the Red Zerg, going for a 15-15 instead. For the Cranky Ducklings, it is Eric. What does he stand for? He stands for Endurance, Righteousness, Intellect, and Kangaroo. Ah, it's Eric. It's beautiful. We have 15 hatch into 15 spawning pool. Is kind of the go-to opener here of Eric that he did popularize. Um, now, what, two years ago at this point? Again, 15-15s weren't really a thing in the meta until Eric did normalize them against Protoss and against Terran as well. Eric, he was uh, the pioneer of this. So really cool to see it again. <laughs> As inexorable. Back at home, just going for the Rax Expand. Standard opener. Standard play here out of inexorable. Very safe play by Eric. Now, what I should say about 1515 in this matchup is no gas. Delayed gases from the Zerg player, which is why this usually means Roach play. The reason for this, because gases are so late, link speed is heavily delayed so it's usually not really worth investing into link speed and you just defend with purely queen then into roach that's how dark often approaches it several i mean many of the other zerg players i imagine eric will do the same we'll see if that's the case meanwhile an exorbital opening up two racks oh okay it's gonna be a two one one so, a very aggressive play here by Inexorable. He's working towards a stim timing, essentially. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be a 2 on one and not a 3-racks. We'll see. My eyes are definitely going to be on Inexorable to see if there's a 3rd racks or a Factory. But this is a, such a greedy variation as well. Again, Inexorable, he Someone skipped his Reaper. To kill your SCVs. Did go for the SCV scout, but he did skip the Reaper. If Eric was going for a Roach all in, then Inexorable would be in trouble. But his tech lab is done. Lings, they do scout. They do confirm the two rack setup. They confirm the 2 on one Technically, there could be like a third and fourth racks behind this, and it could be like a two base all in. Eric going for the forward base? He's crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, the forward expansion has been taken. This is a very rare sight in ZBT or just in general. There's that Roach Warren that we spoke about. Again, because of 1515, we have to go into Roaches. Um, now, what I will say is that Roach openers are typically very safe. They shut down Hellion Aggression very well. Um, they can defend against 2-1-1s, but it's going to be a little bit of a tighter defense here 
uh, we'll see if Eric is able to be, more importantly, in position. The roach says, ooh, as we scan, and the scan reveals the roach warren. Okay. And Exorable, he's aware of what's going on. Now, roaches are not very mobile, so because of that, in Exorable, he can dip between the third, the natural, go into the main, pick off overlords. There is still a lot of potential here for Inexorable. Again, this two-on-one is not an all-in. Um, this should be heading into a third CC, but it's going to be a delayed third CC. So ideally, he gets damage. Looking for any stray lings, looking for any stray overlords. Lair is on the way. Extra gases. Roaches are amassing. Uh, the lack of Kree spread is concerning. There's no tumor connecting the natural to the third. So this third base is very isolated. Very exposed. And here come the Metamax. See in the chat. Kangaroo above all. He is. <laughs> ah. Hell Kangaroo fast. Crazy. Uh, Inexorable setting up bunkers back at home. I think he's misreading this a little bit here. Um, Eric is taking gases. Eric is droning. Eric is going into an infestation bit. Um, so Inexorable, he should be active with this 2 on 1, but he's, his move has delayed. Yeah, delayed move out. Eric going for the scat into the main. And Eric, he is just scared Inexorable into over defending. So. Yeah, big overreaction from the Terran player. You can see he's setting up for an attack that isn't coming. Overseer does come from the Marines back at home. And because of that, Eric, he's, he's saturating his bases. He's fine. He's saturating, he's droning, he's teching, and Festers are on the way. There's one Marine drop moving out. Or one drop of Marines, I should say. But again, this can't really threaten much. This can hunt Overlords, true, but not much else. He wants the Overlord, though. He's gonna get it. He wants the Queen. Queen does survive. Dropping into the main, going for more Overlords. And May gets another. May gets two. Two Overlords go down. Nice pickups. Oh, can he get the Queen? He can! Up! Oh, the Queen goes down. Not bad. So nice trades for Inexorable, but there could have been more damage. There could have been a lot more. Bearing in mind that his third CC was delayed because of this setup. Now he salvages, realizing that alas, there's nothing coming. But this was a late realization for the Terran. And now Eric, he is fully saturated on three bases. He can get a fourth, he can get a fifth. Hive is on the way. The Infestors are amassing energy for more fungals. In between the bases. Inexorable, not going to take this line down, dropping into the main and also hitting the natural. Picks up another queen. Ah, the queen count was low to begin with. So I am concerned. Off the lack of queens. Does bring down the liberator. Getting five drone kills in total throughout this game. From here at Exorable, he's now just setting up on three bases. And now Eric, he's freely taking into Hive. He's in Hive Tech. He's got Adrenal already on the way. Ultra Cavern already on the way as well. Very fast Hive from Eric. And he's been allowed to just get away with everything. He's just gotten away with murder here at this point. The Creep is looking solid, connecting all the bases. Viper production has begun. And Inexorable has fallen behind here. He's gotten some nice pickups here and there, but again, we mentioned that, I mean, he had delayed his own third base quite heavily. He's trying to be active on the map. Bungles do connect. Oh my god, so many Marines go down. Brutal losses for Inexorable, and the, the Infestor survive. They survive, they get out of there.
Landing another fungal. Locking down the army for a second time. Oh, this time though, in Exorbit, he gets two. Two investors. Okay, a more even trade this time for the Terran. If not a better trade, actually, for the Terran. To get two spellcasters. Meanwhile, Eric is about to max out, and with his maxed out army, Eric has options. Either he waits for the Terran to try to take a fourth, which is about to occur, or he just strikes the third uh, into this tank line. Breaking the third base is not going to be easy. You can see here there's a lot of tanks already situated, but now that Inexorable is taking a fourth base, he's spreading out. He's spreading out. He's become. He's spreading out quite thin between these four bases, and that is when he is the most vulnerable. That's when Eric can strike. Speaking of Eric, he's getting ready. Fourth base is spotted. Eric pushing in. Ghosts have arrived. Tanks re-sieging as well. Ah, but the ghosts are exposed. Oof. Yeah, the ghosts go down. Titus baiting is done, but the tanks, they hold their own. Okay, very nice defense. Fungal's a little bit too late. Oh, the chain fungals. <laughs> Better trade towards the end for Eric. He is rebuilding his ultras, taking into lurkers, getting two two upgrades. Eric has got links burrowed at each path. He is ready. I mean, the tank line is brutal, but I believe we have Vipers, right? Yeah, speaking of, there they come. Landing clouds on the tanks. And the tanks are going to be going down. Not much by win position. Eric pushing in. Another blinding cloud. The Ultras, they get on top of the tanks. They break through. And in Exorbital, he has almost nothing left. He has almost nothing left to depend. Ah, GG gets called, and Eric, he will tap the series one to one. We are going to the ace match. GG. GG, well played. We are going all the way to game three. And again, a lot of this did come down to the initial response from Inexorable. Remember, Inexorable, he was opening up 2 1 1, um, but he did misread, as we did mention. He overreacted. He yeah, over responded to the early Roach Warren. He was set up at home, threw down a line of bunkers, and he allowed Eric to get away with his build to drone up and to tech up. Eric was left completely alone, and Inexorable, he himself did go for an aggressive build to begin with, but he wasn't aggressive. So he fell further behind. He fell further behind, opening up two on one, but being defensive with it meant that uh, his macro was lacking, his third base was lacking, and he was just uh, overwhelmed as the game went on. GG. GG, well played. We're now getting into game number three. Let's go. Getting into the ace match. And this could still go either way. Uh, again, a big reason for Eric taking the second game was, you know, a little bit on inexorable for just misreading the situation and just, yeah, having a, a rough time getting into a macro game as a result. We'll see. We have a more even back and forth here in game three. As spawning in the top right hand corner of Post Youth, we have the Brazilian Terran player, the blue Terran representing the Platinum Heroes. It is inexorable. And spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, we have his opponent going for the 15-15 once again. The Brazilian Zerg player, the Red Zerg, representing the Cranky Ducklings, it is Eric. Here we go. 15 hatchery into 15 spawning pool. Once again, going over this build, um, this does often lead into roach play just because your gases are so delayed. So, should be roach play once again from Eric. And hopefully, this time, Inexorable. I mean, 
winding it back a little bit. I was gonna say hopefully Inexorable doesn't um, overreact. What I should say is hopefully Inexorable gets a good read on what's happening. Because technically Eric could go for a two base all in. I mean he's more than willing to. He can be he can be quite aggressive as a player. So it's on Inexorable to confirm what's happening. Whether it's uh, macro, whether it's aggression, whether it's an all in, whether it's a third and, and more saturation, Inexorable needs to needs to realize what's happening. But now we're settling in. We are going to be settling in. And he's rubble going for the racks expand, CC at the natural. And is moving out with the initial SCV scout. SCV is moving out across the map. What I do like here is that this time Inexorable is going Reaper. Now, as a reminder, in last game, because Inexorable was so greedy with the two-on-one, he skipped the Reaper and he went re he went Reactor first into Marine. So that's another reason as to why Inexorable was in the dark as what was happening. So it does dip in, does confirm. Third base on the way. Reaper not able to delay. Instead, goes straight for the main. Gets eyes on the lack of gas saturation. As the gas income is just now beginning. Oh. Uh. Uh-oh. Oh, no, no, Eric. Uh, I was... Uh, every single time there's a freeze, I'm like, is it me? No, it's not me. It's our boy, Pappy. So, uh, looks like we do have some latency issues. Not the first time it's happened tonight. It happened to Allison earlier. And um, based on the sudden freeze there, uh, Eric's power might have gone out. Um, it, it, it is, you know, a regular occurrence when it comes to these weeklies. Um, not when it comes to Eric, but uh, a lot of our players in in this tournament have had some, some latency issues uh, from time to time. If Eric lags out, uh, then we will remake. We will remake and we will re-host the game. Also, I apologize, but uh, we are tied up 1-1. I wasn't quite able to set that, to set that up. Oh, no, Cosmos! No, what just happened? Wait, wait. How do... <laughs> wait. If... <laughs> if Eric was lagging out, why did Cosmos leave? Ah... <laughs> we'll have to restart. <laughs> what, just, what just happened? Oh my god. It's like Eric's getting shot up and then Cosmos falls over. It's like, what What? What just happened? Uh -huh. So we will remake. Yeah, yeah. We, we will remake. Uh, basically, it looks like because Eric was lagging out, Cosmos, he's like, yeah, he's probably going to lag out. We'll just rehost. Um, so he just left. He left preemptively. It's like, Papi, we're okay. Este Cosmos. <laughs> uh, it's all good. We'll remake. So we will resume via replay. Uh, Cosmos, for those who are curious, he is the Brazilian caster. Um, he is the main Brazilian caster. On top of that, he's also the main organizer and sponsor for this tournament, or main organizer at least. Uh, so without Cosmos, none of this would be possible. So much love. Big shout out to Cosmos. Fala galera, Papi. Fala galera. Much love to Cosmos. But, uh, yeah, we do need a moment to set that up and to get things going again. Beautiful. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, apparently, Eric was lagging out. And Cosmos, he didn't leave voluntarily. Apparently, he, his game just, like, just kind of crashed. Uh, apparently, Battle.net just kicked him out. Ah. Uh.
Okay, all good. Thankfully, we have the technology. We can load back in. can load back into our game and get things going once again. Oh. Get him. As we enter the ace match and ooh, so far the Reaper does dip into the main. Queen is keeping up, Reaper is deflected, third base has been placed, and we can settle on it. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, meanwhile, okay. meanwhile, we do have an Exorable going third CC, three CC before starports, a very economic build here by an Exorable. So far, so good. Um, interestingly enough, he is hiding the third CC very far back in the main. I mean, the main base on post truth is, as you can imagine, insanely large. So, Inexorable just making it that much more difficult for Eric to scout. The downside is that it has quite a ways to float over to the third. Overlord dips in. There's Marine to deny the scout as well. And Eric does open Roaches. As, as we mentioned before, because of the 15-15, Roach play is required here from Eric. It's kind of... The necessary follow-up. Here we go. Alien's going to be moving out. Stim is on the way. Interesting. It's going to be 3cc into faster Stim. This can lead into a Hellbat push. Meanwhile, the first two Hellions, they do get into the mineral line, but the Roaches, they pop out just in time. One drone goes down. Two drones even. Three workers towards the end. Three drone kills. We do see Hellion, def oh, sorry, Eric defending. Force back to Hellion's Overlord dives in for the scout and does get eyes on the third CC. Three CC, two on one, or even three on one set up here from Inexorable. And he has stopped Hellion production. So Inexorable just getting into bio play. Working towards Dim, not going for Hellbats. Hell is they dive back in. Drones line up. Oh my god. Getting one more drone. Just the one. Uh, this looks like the beginning of an, of an A-Rax, by the way. Bunker gets cancelled. Once again, an absorbable heal is a little bit afraid of a counterattack, but there is none. Getting to a 5 rack setup. And I'm curious if we throw down three more behind this. This could be a three base all in from an absorbable. Starport's on the way. CC's floating over. Likewise, Eric taking extra gases, just like the previous game, going to 1 1 upgrades, working towards, I imagine, infestation bit into infestors. Playing Roach Ravager initially. Again, because of this build from Inexorable, he doesn't really have any presence on the map. It was a big delay on the starport, so a big delay on the medevacs. That's why he's stuck at home. That is why Eric can drone. He could, but he's not. He has the gold base hack. Like, he, he has taken the gold, but there we go. Now transferring over. Does saturate his gold. And Eric, he is not droning up. He could, uh, given this kind of game state, he could have saturated his third and gone up to four base saturation, but no one said he's focusing on Roach Ravager. Likewise, Inexorable will soon move out once Metamax hit the field. And will Eric have enough in time? Infestation bit just now starting up, so he does not have an Infestor, he doesn't have Fungal Growth. Here comes the Bio! And is Eric going to be ready for this? So he is rallying at his marines. Gets a queen. Uh, Sims on in. The roaches, they're going to be struggling here. Yeah, roaches, they go down one after the other. Yeah, roaches are falling and inexorable. He busts in towards that mineral line and Eric. He gets going with his pants down. He's not ready for this. Ah, he's just not ready. 
four, five drones go down. Uh, Roaches are barely popping out, and can Eric hold on? Uh, it's gonna be close. Looks like he barely does hold. Out uh, the boys. Boys are pulled. And again, the is still rallying across the map, so we'll try to break through the front door. Going for the gold. Roche is popping out just barely in time. Eric, he's holding. He lost a handful of workers, but he does save most of them. Does save them, moving out. And Festus are on the way for fungals. Oh, there's no tanks behind this, just purely marine. Again, and he's horrible. He was committed. Uh, Eric has maybe overextended. Yeah, I'm not too fond of this. Oof. Leaving out a lot of roaches. A lot of roaches do go down. Infestors have arrived. Oh, the slowlings! <laughs> Uh, it looks like it is normal. He, st he still has enough, though. It looks like he should still have enough to break through this. I say that there are still those fungals that Eric's holding on to. He's holding on to the fungal growth. Uh, tanks have arrived. Exorbal going for a doom drop towards the main. Uh, that is going to give Eric more time to build up an army. And again, Eric, he resaturates the gold. Medivac just spotted. Eric, he's out of position. He has to race on over. Tanks are sieging. Where Travager has arrived. And he does get the first tank. Second tank goes hang as well. Here comes the Fungles. Up. Up. Then you connect. He gets one. Eric, he's holding. He's surviving. Barely holding on. I drop back into the main. Liberator towards the natural. Going for the queen. Oh, Queen goes down. Five drone kills as well. God. Gets five drone kills at the same time. Full meta goes down to the piles. Eric is fighting back. He can still make this work. Sorbel trying to keep up himself. Going for his own gold. I will say that he still has a better economy. The Terran player still has much better workers, saturation, mules as well. And he can outscale Roach Ravager. Ultra production has begun. But Eric, he's not ready with those ultras. Link Speed is finishing up. Plus on, me plus on melee. Tanks were caught on Siege. And he's getting on top of the tanks. Oh, and Exorbo pulled out for a moment here. Well, with an X, but, oh god, it's still not enough Zerg, not enough Roach Ravager. And the Terran has done it. I mean, there are five Ultras on the way, so maybe Eric can hold on. But now there's no more Infestors. I believe the Infestor count was reset. Yeah, no more Infestors are out. Go base falls. And Inexorable takes down the fourth base, takes down the fifth as well. Eric, he's stuck on three bases. He's pinned against the wall. And it looks like Inexorable, he, he can do it. He can clean this up. He can keep going. But now securing the fifth. Ultra's being forced back. They have most of their carapace upgrades. Most of them. Now we're pushing into tank fire. The Ultras, they do defend. They clean up the tanks. Eric barely holding on. He has a comparable army supply. But pushing into more tanks is going to be brutal. Yeah, the Ultras are all on their own. They need support. Oh, they're so fragile on their own. And they go down one after the other. There's four Ultras left. Eric pulling away. Still no ghost production, which is a little bit concerning. 
just marine tank. Purely marine tank. And all Inexorable has to do is deny the fourth. Deny the fourth base over and over again and just starve Eric out. That's what, oh my god, the Miles! Miles are popping up. Being run by a catch reinforcements. Eric's doing whatever he can. Fourth base is denied. Eric, he does finally get a fourth up and running, true, because he double expanded, but Inexorable's maxed out. The Terran player, he's maxed out. May not have ghosts, but for now, I don't think he needs them. It would be easier with them, true. <laughs> but he's got Marines, tanks. Liberators have arrived. He has freedom. That's more than enough. As he brings down another Ultra, getting on top of the fourth base. Ultras, they just can't do much here. Down to one, down to zero. Ultras, GG gets called. It's just too much to handle. And Inexorable will take the series two to one, advancing on to the grand finals. GG. GG, well played. Congratulations, Inexorable will take it. Uh, Eric, unfortunately, he was unaware of the eventual move out that Inexorable was going for. If you remember, it took him a little bit too long to saturate his third base. Um, he was making roaches, then he went back into droning, so he was making workers at the wrong moment there, at the wrong time. Um, his roaches were barely not out in time to survive and defend against the first push. Uh, we saw that Inexorable, he got a lot of value there, killing so many roaches, and he snowballed out of control from there just keeping the roach count low keeping the army supply low for eric and just not allowing him to get into his final form into his ultras too seamlessly um even though eric he teched into ultras and into hive tech he didn't have the economy to sustain that he did not have a fourth base without it he couldn't really keep up with the supply of the terror gg gg well played with that eric is knocked out and we have the grand finals it's going to be a tvp between master and inexorable here we go. It is going to be that Grand Finals. Uh, we're going to be going on a short break. Uh, Vito's are underway, likewise. And uh, when we come back, we will have that best of five. See you soon. See you soon.